Hidden cause number 15, why you still have low thyroid symptoms, even though you may be taking thyroid medication, and even though your lab tests look normal, is decreased conversion of T4 into T3 caused by high levels of cortisol. So here's what I mean. 97% of what your thyroid gland makes is T4. T4 is inactive. It doesn't do anything. It's got to get converted into T3. That happens primarily in the liver uh, due to the action of this enzyme called 5-deiodinase. And to put it real simple, elevated levels of cortisol shut down this enzyme. And what that means is you don't get a lot of T3. And that produces the low thyroid symptoms that you're familiar with, which include things like brain fog, fatigue, depression, constipation, dry hair, hair loss. Those are the things that happen when you don't get enough T3. And in this particular hidden cause, it's when cortisol is too high. So we have to ask ourselves, what is cortisol and why would it be too high? Well, cortisol is a hormone that's made by your adrenal glands. And if, you're, if you read and you see a lot of things about weight loss, people try to paint cortisol as this evil thing, you know. But cortisol just does what you tell it to do. It's kind of like, you know, cholesterol. There is no evil cholesterol. The cholesterol just does what your body is telling it to do. So high cortisol is typically caused by a couple of things. First thing it's caused by is a psychological stress response. So people that are under lots of psychological stress typically have high cortisol levels, at least, you know, in the short term. And that can shut down this enzyme, producing low thyroid symptoms. Now, another thing that can cause high cortisol is anything that's inflammatory. So, I mean, that, that's across the board. So it could be if you have an infection, if you have an autoimmune disease, if you have a food sensitivity. Those are all things that can cause elevated cortisol. And elevated cortisol will shut down the conversion of T4 to T3 and produces those low thyroid symptoms. So, so what do you do about it? Well, what you do about it depends on what is actually going on. Uh, the first thing I can tell you, and this is something that will be good for everybody, is if you find yourself that you have a lot of psychological stress, you, know, you may not be able to change what stresses you, but you can change how your body responds to it. And what I recommend is people do something called a relaxation response. Now, this was discovered and really refined by a, a Harvard medical doctor named Herbert Benson. You can Google this, relaxation response. It's a very simple semi-meditative technique, but it's kind of like doing a, a mental flush. You know, it's helping this stuff kind of flush out of your system. And it's very, very effective. What it can do, they've shown, is lower blood pressure, you know, 20 to 30 points in people with high blood pressure without medication. So it's a very powerful technique. It's drug-free. It's something you can learn how to do yourself. Now, in terms of, you know, ferreting out where inflammation is, that's up to a doctor who's good, who knows what to look for. So remember that list I just said, right? There's food sensitivity. There's GI infections. There's infections of, uh, you know, bacterial, viral infections, there's autoimmunity. Your doctor's got to be able to look for all that stuff. So the hidden cause, number 15, is when you have low conversion of T4 into T3 caused by high levels of cortisol. And high levels of cortisol are typically caused by stress, uh, psychological stress, and caused by inflammatory uh, events. So your doctor's got to know how to deal with both of those. And don't forget to look up how to do that relaxation response.